I have a small collection of 124 modules of different types and I'd like to test how good those modules are, what is the range and how much I can squeeze from those other things. And in order, in order to test them, I built, it, uh, built the system, consisted from the uh, receiver and consisted from, uh, and the second part is the transmitter. So each part consists from the Atmega Pro Mini board connected to the OLED display and connected to the uh, NRF24 modules. Uh, NRF24 module. And uh, for instance, this board is connected to the PC as well. Uh, but we can unplug it uh, at any moment from the PC and uh, to see, for instance, to test the, the range of operation of this module. So what I see on this uh, OLED display is uh, the total number of packets sent uh, for the whole time of operation, in my case over the night, night time period. I see the number of packets lost per each 1000 packets sent and I see the percentage of those packets, uh, packets lost. Uh, I also uh, display information on the PC, so I have two windows open for, for each, uh, for the receiver and for the transmitter. And I see the information for the debug purposes to make sure that the system works properly. So each board, the transmitter and the receiver send information to the computer, but uh, both of them can be at unplugged at any moment and then they're going to work uh, autonomously from the computer independently and I still uh, going to be able to see the information. Okay, so for instance, uh, now we see that we uh, have very small loss, only two packets, but the boards are quite close to each other. But we can know that the system is operational by using this magical device. So let's call the transmitter. Okay, so I have 20, 30 packets lost. Uh, <laughs> I have to make a remark that you have to cover it in the right way. You have to put it close to the antenna, for whatever reason, to, to block the signal. Because the can itself is going to uh, re-radiate the, the signal. Basically, the antenna will use the current on the, on the scan and this, uh, this current is going to emit radio waves. So you're not going to completely shield the, the board, but you can uh, get some uh, larger number of packets lost. And of course I'm going to move it uh, far away and to test the range of this system, but at this moment I want to make sure that the system works properly. Okay, a few comments about the code structure. So I have the transmitter module. In this uh, module I have a small piece of code which uh, only sends the packets. So I, I'm sending 1000 packets and I do nothing else inside. So, th so that I can do it as fast as possible. Uh, the same uh, piece of code I have on the receiver side. So this code only receives uh, the packets and does nothing else. That's why I can uh, do it very fast and then I can measure speed, uh, measure the time of execution so I can estimate the speed, uh, the speed of this module accurately. So after we have done uh, uh, the setting and receiving packets, we uh, can do something else. For, for instance, I can display the back information of a serial or I can uh, display information on the OLED display or do anything else. But the critical part is to send the packets as fast as I can and receive them as well. So next, uh, I have to make a few comments about the uh, variables in the code. So to send uh, the data in an RF24, we use an uh, array of 32 bytes. So the module sends 32 bytes of uh, information, of data. Uh, I can uh, send less then 32 bytes, uh, 1 byte, 2 bytes, whatever. And there is a special comment to uh, decrease the number of bytes. But uh, from my tests, I can conclude that it does not affect the speed. 
So the bit rate, the bit rate is the same. So the the idea is, uh, or maybe the rule of thumb is to send 32 bytes of information because uh, it's not going to affect the performance of the module. Uh, second thing is uh, how to test uh, the lost packets. And the idea is very simple. On the transmitter side, we send uh, data in, uh, we say we send number, which is uh, incremented by one uh, for each new packet. For instance, so we send one, two, three, and so on. And on the receiver side, we uh, from each packet extract this number and uh, see how it's how it is different uh, so we compare this number from the number from the previous packet and see if it's incremented by one or maybe by more than one so for instance if we have one do, if the difference between the current uh, number in the packet and the number in the previous packet is one then it's all good if this number is larger than one then probably we have lost some packets in between and we can estimate how many packets we have lost if we subtract from the current number the previous number. So we know how many packets are missing. Uh, next, uh, to send long number, so I'm sending a 4 byte number so that I can track the performance <coughs> of the module. module, I can know exactly how many mo uh, packets were sent and so on. So to send this, it's convenient to define uh, this variable. Not as a byte, but as, uh, but as uh, a long int int integer. So in that case, Andrina is going to see this array of uh, 32 bytes as array of uh, 32 divided by by 4, which is 8. So as array of 8 uh, elements, and each element is going to have 4 uh, bytes inside. So it's not going to affect. Uh, the way the data is sent, you still have to send it byte by byte, but uh, the Andrina is going to see uh, uh, this uh, array of data is consisted of uh, four bytes of information. So that's good to remember. So to, to make sure that you have the right uh, type of this data so you can operate easily in your code. If it's just byte, it's going to be difficult to go beyond 225, uh, 26 uh, <clears throat> number. Okay, uh, so next we have to set up the module, level 24, and the first thing is to select the channel. We have 128 channels, so we have to set the, the channels we are going to operate on, let's say number 5 or 20. 120 whatever and then uh, we have to uh, add identification to the packets because then do, do you know how it works it looks at the pocket ID packet ID and it can work with multiple mod modules so to set the ID for the packets we have to open a writing pipe or reading pipe depends on, depending on what we do send or receive the data and this ID is 64 bit so it can be any anything inside, like say a number, one, two, three, or whatever, or it can be a name, pipe two, for instance, and so on. So you have to you have to add the ID to the packet, so you can operate with uh, many of those uh, modules. You can receive, for instance, signal from uh, I think six transmitters simultaneously and make sense of it. But <clears throat> you have to uh, to know that. This ID uh, can be added separately. Uh, 64 bits meaning that uh, we have 8 bytes of information. And we can use just for instance uh, bytes from, from this, uh, bytes from the data to add the ID for the packets. So I'm not really sure why they put this inside. But anyways. So this is the, the way the code works. And then we have it implemented. Here is the code. It's pretty straightforward. We have uh, included the libraries we need for the NRF module. Uh, next, we create the object radio with dig uh, digital pins for the uh, that we connected on the Arduino Pro mini board. Uh, next, we create the array 
of 32 bytes, in my case array of 8 elements by 4 uh, bytes long I'm assigned long type I'm using because I needed to measure the number of packets and so on Next we define the radio parameters uh, It's pretty, pretty simple actually well, Most of those uh, things can be excluded but I I put as many as I, as I can so that I can uh, remember what those parameters uh, are used for and next is the loop so this is the loop I send 1000 packets and do nothing else and do it as fast as possible and here is the pointer to the array of uh, 32 bytes and I send 32 bytes and that's it and yes and the value actually I'm setting as the first element uh, the number of packets so I increase this value by 1, so n is the number, and I assign to the first element of this array, uh, which is 4 bytes, this number, number which is also an assigned long number. So I can have many, many of those uh, packets numbered. And the uh, receiver part, it's also simple, the only difference is that I add the library to work is OLED display, uh, next, again, I create the object radio with digital pins. Next, I define the parameters of the radio. Oh, the, the key elements actually for the radio is number of channel. Mm, so the, the the rest is actually is not in use. But anyways, and now uh, next is the cycle to receive as many packets as I can. Like in this case, it's 1,000 packets. And what I do in this uh, cycle, first I measure the time which takes to uh, send those to receive those packets. And inside of this uh, cycle, I have also function to count the number of lost packets. So like, if the difference between the number in the two uh, packets is larger than one, then I add number of false spoke packets to the error variable and then I have a small loop to work with the OLED display display the information that's it I have moved to another room and I uh, still can receive the signal uh, with some significant loss if I move antenna a bit I can lose the signal completely so it works but it's not as good as I was expecting it to be so I have 100% loss so but if you position it in the right way you might still receive the signal so you have to be in the direct visible range or maybe you have to build external antenna or maybe two different model with power of the fire uh, but for, for this module like the application is very limited I would say we are not particularly impressed with those and other 24 modules so the idea is to squeeze as much as we can and here is my spectrum analyzer from the previous video so I see where the uh, signal is and I set my transmitter to work in different channels so it sends 500 packets and then it move, moves to the next channel so I'm scanning all 128 channels and I see it on my uh, receiver so for instance, if I switch my cell phone I will see that uh, I have some... Uh, okay, no internet connection uh, Anyways uh, So if I move my mouse I see the signal there So I see the noise here and there and in the real world, I expect to have uh, well, at this moment I have it. So the internet is is up, and I see the uh, the noise rising. So the idea is that work in the real world, we're going to have the noise distribution, and the idea is to find the the right place, the frequency band, so that we can have the clear path for this for the signal. So to do that, uh, I will send the signal not a single channel, but I'm going to use different channels. I'm going to listen at those different channels and then even if I uh, have a loss of the signal on 9 out of 10, 10 uh, channels I still should be able to control 
to control my uh, my system. So as a reminder, uh, we look at what we do. We do the radio control system and uh, how it works. I have the server which expects to receive the data every 20 milliseconds. Seconds. So thus I have to uh, submit the data at the frequency 50 Hz or 50 times per second, which is pretty slow. Because at this moment I am uh, getting data at the rate 2000 per one second and I'm getting 32 uh, bytes of data. So I have 40 times as much uh, data as I need, uh, as many data as I need. And uh, thus I can lose, uh, I can lose uh, 39 packets out of 40 and just receive one and I should be fine. It should be sufficient to control my system, or my model. Uh, thus the idea is uh, to spread this uh, extensive data over the frequency band and send it to many, as many channels as I can. Let's say I want to use 40 channels and I'm going to send a data on those 40 channels. And I'm going to listen to all of those 40 channels. And then even if even at one one channel I'm going to have a pass, I'm, I'm fine. I have enough data to control my model. So uh, this technology is called frequency hopping or spread spectrum or whatever. But the idea is to, to use many uh, many channels to uh, submit the data and to listen to many channels. I have to probably define the way it's going to operate. Uh, what to think about this, but uh, seems to be a straightforward and maybe I'll do it in the next video.